Well, it's fairly standard within moral philosophy to distinguish three areas of moral philosophy. There's what's called meta-ethics, which is trying the, the, the study of what morality is, what its status is. And then there's normative ethics, which is concerned with trying to understand what the correct principles for action are. And then there's practical ethics, which is work on practical moral issues that people face. And although it's standard to draw these distinctions, I know Derek thought there really was no distinction of any significance between normative ethics, which is concerned with what the correct moral theory is, and practical ethics. Not that he thought that he knew exactly what the right theory was, but he thought, as I think, that it's really not possible to do good work in normative ethics without thinking about what the implications of a moral theory are for practical issues. Derek saw himself as getting us all closer to the truth about morality in various ways. Now, in one part of the work that he did um, in what's called meta-ethics, that work is not work that's likely to affect matters of practice, because the work in meta-ethics was intended to try to defend the claim that, as he would put it, things really do matter in themselves. But there are lots of philosophical challenges to this idea that things can matter objectively. Uh, Derek's leading contemporary philosophical opponent in uh, his later years was Bernard Williams, who made the claim that, no, there is no such thing as absolute mattering. Nothing matters from the point of view of the universe or anything. Mattering is just what matters to me or you or us. That's what mattering is. Derek's view was, no, things really do matter. This is an objective truth about the world. But then other parts of Derek's work really were concerned with uh, matters of normative moral theory that could affect the way in which uh, we act. Abortion, climate change, our treatment of animals, and so on, across many different uh, problems in practical ethics. Derek's work was deliberately written with the greatest possible clarity. On the other hand, he was not a popular writer. His work is not easily accessible. It's not because it's written in a difficult or technical way. Uh, one doesn't need to have any prior knowledge of philosophy or any kind of special vocabulary, really, to read Derek's work because he makes a, a great effort to ensure that what he says, he says very simply and clearly. But it is the depth and complexity of his argumentation that makes reading his work a challenge, even for people who are very smart. And that's just because Derek really was a genius. He was never near the surface in what he was doing. Uh, and so for that reason, Derek never became a celebrity. He was not known to the wider public. There are a number of philosophical celebrities who publish a lot of books that are more accessible because they're less deep. The, the arguments just don't go nearly so deep as Derek's do. But one of movement uh, of thought in his life that I think I understand a little bit now is his, con his commitment to moral and political ideas of substance and urgency when he was a student editor of the, the university student newspaper writing these politically committed 
editorials about apartheid and nuclear weapons and, and, and so on, which he did. And then, in some ways, the withdrawal from that active commitment to politics and public life and, and practical moral issues into this highly complicated, very abstract, theoretical set of philosophical paradoxes and puzzles and so on that he was working on. And then later on, again, a, a, a really deep concern about trying to get, trying to solve the puzzles and paradoxes and get things right, achieve agreement, 